Yes. Cap to cap. All right, welcome back. Uh, we're back. Uh, you guys, we already introduced ourselves, so I'm not going to do that. You guys are sick and tired of us already. Anyways, <laughs> we have our special guest on, like I alluded to earlier, uh, Mike Olbinski. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> That's right. right? That's right. Yeah, so Mike is a uh, photographer. He's a, uh, he's a filmmaker. He's a storm chaser. He's an all-around badass. That's kind of what we like to have on this show. I feel like we say that a lot. Um, but Mike, we just found out he's got he's got like footage on the uh, four, Thor two movie, so that's pretty yeah. cool. We're just he kind of slid it in there. Yeah, he's like, I don't know if you guys like, know. oh yeah, it's, there's a time lapse in there of mine. I'm like, oh cool, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that later. And here we are, uh, perfect. Um, what we like to do, uh, Mike, is we're gonna play some Florida Man. Uh, it's basically when I read an actual uh, Florida Man headline, I'll leave a blank out, and we'll all try to figure out what the hell that blank was. Um, <laughs> We we actually keep track of this for for us. Actually, the last guest got it right, right? He got um, it right. Amazing, dude. That was insane. Yeah. Uh, Will got it right, uh, and I don't think we got a Florida man right in like two months. So that was impressive. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. uh, let me hit the intro. You don't and say all that. I mean, right? Like, yeah. Just I throw mean, us under the bus. Yeah. We suck. We suck. We. All right, guys. Um, this one is out of Charlotte County, and it's an actual woman this time. I feel like we're getting a lot of women lately. What happened to Florida and, man? And we've had a couple non-Florida non -Florida man. Yeah, he's like Hawaii Florida man. I'm surprised it's Arizona like, hasn't showed up. Arizona no, man, like we're climbing the list. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you're right behind Florida. You're coming. You're coming along. Uh, all right, so Florida man out of Charlotte County. Florida woman arrested at Florida wedding reception after allegedly getting drunk and blank. Again, Florida woman arrested at Florida wedding reception after allegedly getting drunk and blank. And mm. I'll make Chase go first. Thank of you. Of course you will. Um, okay. I'm going to say she uh, drove into, like, the church. Like, as they were getting married, she got so drunk that she, like, went off the road and veered into the church. Okay. Good news. Or is went that the into reception? the venue. Is that, yeah, but it's at the reception, so no okay. one's in the so church. So there's no church, so. well, you're already what, okay, wrong. I, yeah. In the venue. Mm. In the venue. So she's trying to yes. run people over. So she just got drunk and was just like, ah, and just veered on to the venue and hit the cake and ruined the cake. Nice, nice. Nice sound effects, man. It sold the store. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I got. All right, uh, Mike, how about you, man? Um, I'm going to go with some form of flashing the guests or streaking. Ooh, that's good. Streaking that's is a good. good one. That is a good, a good one. I can see the headline. Kevin. Wait, you said she was a uh, she was like a bridesmaid or just a girl at the wedding? Yes. Uh, I said Florida. I didn't say it at all. Oh, so she stole the uh, wedding ring. That's what Ooh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, she stole the wedding bands and ran off. That would with be them. impressive. <laughs> all right. It's like, oh, let me see that pretty ring. That's beautiful. I'm out of here. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna let Mike decide this one. Uh, and know. see if Chase deserves this answer or half point. He deserves it. No. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> Just say no. Florida Maybe. woman arrested at Florida wedding reception after allegedly getting drunk and running over best man with car. Yeah, that absolutely that sounds qualifies. pretty dang close. Well yeah. done, Chase. I mean, is that get... a one point? Is that a one one pointer? Yeah, I think so. I mean, he was driving a car. She yeah. was driving a car and crap, obviously ran over somebody at the reception. Yeah. I mean, that works for me. Okay. That's a great guess. All right. I'll take oh, it. Chase. I was going to say that was really specific. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got to get specific, man. They're always yeah. crazy. You got that Florida man book you've been reading. Uh -huh. That's what Chase used Thanks, to always Kevin. say to me. I used well, to because wow. Are you Chase would be I'm like. putting it on the board? No, I was telling yeah. him, oh, you yeah. got that Florida man book you've been reading. You know, like he always, always say to me. Because his uh, would be so out of left field. He'd be like, Florida man jumps up in the air and does what? And Kevin's like, he jumps up in the air and rides a donkey yeah. all the way to Peru. <laughs> and you'll get it right. And it's like, I'm like, what? <laughs> like I said, so, you think like a Florida man, you can be a Florida man. <laughs> all right. So the, the one thing I have to do is kind of break this story down. And I normally don't go into length, but it's an absolute shit show. And I have to tell you how she got to this point. All right. So the story goes that she drank almost an entire bottle of Fireball 
said one guest. She Sounds just like went up. Yeah. She just went up to the best man and grabbed his keys out of his pocket and jumped into his car. She took off and his feet were dragging across the ground. He had had to hit the e brake. She went back inside. She grabbed a big bottle of Captain Morgan and started guzzling it. Then she got violent, and as soon as the best... Oh, uh, now she got violent. Yeah, not so far. <laughs> yeah. As soon as the best man turned around, she came up and cracked him upside the head with the bottle. She Holy claimed shit. <laughs> she claimed to uh, be having an asthma attack and started shaking as if she was having a seizure. They took her to the hospital where she exposed herself to deputies, mm-hmm. assaulted... Oh, there we go. Hey, whoa. Hey. Whoa. That kicked, should also count. Right? Yeah, and kicked over uh, yeah. her bedpan. Uh, the... This arrest is Willis's ninth in the Charlotte County, uh, um, I don't know, police station. And she was oh. a guest of the wedding. Or is she? A uh, actually, no. Or... Here's the best part. So the last quote, I'm glad you said that. And I quote, the bride said it was a bad decision to make her the bride, uh, the maid of honor. No way. Uh, maid of honor. Woo. She's been arrested that, nine that times. Is... You made her the maid of honor? That's what I thought. Like, oh, come on. God. Like, that's friendship. She's got something on her. That is She's a got very poor her. decision. <laughs> That is a very classic Florida, if I've ever heard. Every, of everybody's got a friend like that, though. You're like, God damn, I love you. Maybe but not to that extent, but not yeah, to that. Maid of honor, it. though. Yeah, yeah the yeah. maid of honor is straight. So. Oh. That's that's intense, man. <laughs> um, on that note, this is intense. I'm gonna show a, a video of yours. That was a good uh, segue, guys. You should have was it? Me that. that was. Good. I thought so. Okay. <laughs> I hate you. All uh, you said I was pulled, on that note. So. I pulled a small right? clip from a uh, YouTube man. I didn't. I have some photography background. I didn't know you can do like time lapse of tornadoes, man. Um, I'm gonna play this. Guys. I knew you're gonna play that video as soon as you said I'm gonna yeah. play a video, I guys. I, don't know I know which you, one. <laughs> I know you're. Um, I know they're listening. They're like, shit. I can't see it. Go to his Instagram right now. It's a uh, Mike O L B I N S K I. Go check out some of his videos and photos, and you'll get an idea of what we're watching right now. fight somebody <laughs> I know, that, was, that was intense that music. pumps you yeah. up <laughs> yeah that was a very I, I needed a clip that would fit the end of that music because that was in, very intense i liked it it faded it faded to black and then you popped back up i was that was a dope video man it was very um, good. Awesome. Dude, that was my first uh, tornado that end one really was my first tornado on time lapse and i was literally in tears afterwards because i texted my wife and i'm like i because that was my whole goal that year was yeah. I needed a tornado on time lapse, and I texted my wife that I got it, and she said, "I'm so proud of you." And I just, <laughs> she just lost it. <laughs> it was so much effort to get that, oh, so yeah, um, awesome. that was awesome. So, like, so you you storm chasing the time lapse. I don't know where to start on this one because I I have the <laughs> I I want to ask the photography questions about the time lapse, but I feel like we'll get into that later. So, how did you end up uh, storm chasing? Was it weddings first? Because, like I said I, to you earlier, I was like on your Instagram, <laughs> I'm checking time lapses, and then I get to your website, I'm checking storm video and photos, and then out of nowhere, I'm in like a photography um <laughs> wedding world. And I'm like, this dude yeah. does everything. Yeah, it's a, a wedding world. Well, yeah. you know, I I started. Um, it's been about eleven years, um, I think roughly, that I kind of started doing this, and the storm chasing kind of came first. Um, that's what I love. I mean, I've loved weather since I was a little kid, so. The weather passion has been there the whole time. And when I started getting into it, I I believe one of my things was if hey, if I want to do photography full time, I'm gonna have to shoot weddings because I'm not gonna be able to make the money storm chasing probably. And um, I'm getting decent at this, so maybe I'll do that. So that became I wasn't sure I wanted to do that. And then I had a really cool wedding. My buddy and I shot and flew out to uh, Malibu, shot away on the beach, worked really hard, flew back home that night, were exhausted, and I'm like, that was a good Thing we did that day like it was they were just very appreciative of what we did and stuff and so i was like i think i can do this so so like that was kind of a means to an end to to make money enough to be able to storm chase and you know a- after i mean about three years ago it's kind of the storm chasing has finally surpassed the weddings in terms of like business income and all that and weddings they're also kind of slowing down a little bit for me so um but yeah i just started doing it you know i mean i i watched i was really inspired by storm chasers i don't know if you guys have ever seen that show oh, it was on yes. every channel 
So I didn't know that really that people did that. And it was a very educational show and it was um, eye opening. And I didn't know there was just a whole culture out there. So I just started doing that a little bit around Arizona and then kind of started flying out to the plains and um, seeing what would happen. I'm really pissed off you didn't just say you weren't inspired by the movie Twister. Because yeah. right? <laughs> that's like, that's, <laughs> he's like, yeah. yeah, I hear this shit all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Twister, uh, Twister is awesome. And I didn't. And that was also a movie that came out bef- way before, you know, that Discovery Channel show. And yeah. I saw it and just had no idea. You know, it's a movie. You know, there's so much about it that's unrealistic. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. I'm you sure, know, yeah. and so you're like, that's not real. I'm sure that doesn't happen. But then the actual chasers in that movie the community the culture and the weirdness that's freaking real that's real yeah God, that's so awesome. i gotta ask in the community because i i've always wanted to try it for one summer i like all right i'll do it this summer i'll volunteer and try to like take like to be a vide- videographer for it or something like that like yeah. how many of you guys are actually meteorologists um oh there's a bunch of meteorologists yeah. that chase i mean there's probably a lot that aren't i'm not i'm a photographer yeah. i mean i know how to forecast i know how to get where i want to go but there's definitely a limit to my in my brain, yeah. the math and the knowledge behind it. Where I'm like, I don't, I don't want to learn anymore. I really just want to be in front of the storm. I, I don't want to do the trig that's involved. I don't want. The, no. Yeah. Well, and it also works for me now that the forecast models that are out there are so much better than they used to be. I mean, no, there's but, old guys that I know that have been chasing for 35 years, and they had no internet in their car. They would literally pull up to like a library or somewhere to either you know, plug into the, you know, or use the computer in the library, or then they would try to steal Wi-Fi from like a Starbucks or something, wherever, when that, I mean, they would, they had to, and then they had to just go out and pray that they were in the right spot. They didn't really have mobile radar. So, I mean, now it's just so much easier and the models are so accurate that a couple of days ahead of time, you can pinpoint, you know, Hey, I'm going to go to this place in Texas and wait there and a storm will go up and I'll chase it for a few hours. And, you know, that happened last year to me. And it's just, sometimes it's, it's easier than you know it used to be. So, so I I have to ask a two part question. Uh, yeah. One, are you scared when you do this? And two, if you are, what is the most scared you've been when oh, doing this? That's a good question. Um, I get nervous um, a decent amount of times if it's a scary situation. Like if I'm if I'm running if I'm like dodging a storm where I'm like I've got to go. I have no road. You know I've got to like kind of outrace a storm and that's where I'm kind of like <laughs> biting nails. And, and I, you know, I had that a couple of years ago where, you know, storm is kind of coming at me from the West. It's moving East. And all I had was a northbound road, nothing East. So I had to basically just floor it to get kind of past it and then go back East to get in front of it. And I'm like, just please don't move so fast that I just get destroyed by hail. And then you kind of don't see what's going on in there. But I did have like early on um, in my, I don't know, like, Nine years ago when I was out in Nebraska, I, I kind of got trapped between two tornado worn storms. I had one coming at me. I thought I was safe. It was going to pass to my north and I'm sitting there. It's very murky anyway, so I couldn't see anything. It was a horrible visibility day. But as I'm sitting there kind of watching this one, thinking I'm safe, another one just south of it went up and was coming at me too, except it was going to cut off any south escape. So all I could do was go north and yet that other storm was coming. So anyway, I end, and it gets dark and I end up just having to go north of this town and go east and try to get out of the path of both of these storms. And I'm doing about 95 on farm roads in Nebraska in the middle of the, you know, like what nine are, o'clock at what night. Are you driving, was, by the way, um, like in, the, in these storms? Um, I dr- I've driven a forerunner for quite a long okay. time. I just got a new one because I kind of told my other one. But my the, my 2014, I did put about t- 260,000 miles on it. It's the best. <laughs> nice. Um, it was the best vehicle okay. to own for this. It wasn't even a four by four. Now I finally have a four by four, like a real man. <laughs> so, I was um, trying to envision so this like stuff because I've seen some of your videos, uh, the hail videos where you're driving through that stuff, man. I, yeah. I li- we live in Florida, so like we get hail, but I've never like been that. through hail like that. Not like that. No, it wasn't even till it was a couple of years ago. I finally got in big enough hail that my windshield just started cracking with all the radial, like circular cracks. I've, I had plenty of dents from hail and had like a, the, the cupboard of your mirror get, you know, knocked off from hail and wind yeah. and all that stuff. But yeah, you can get, I don't want, especially the new truck. I'm really like torn between, I can't <laughs> wait to go chasing with it. Cause it's like 2021 trail edition, the army green, it's freaking beautiful, yeah. lifted it and all this stuff. And now I'm like, I'm going to go out there and drive it through hail and immediately get <laughs> hail dense in it. I'm is just is like, there anything so, you can do? 
like to to protect it at all well i'm i'm getting this rack put on the roof with you know the ladder from this local shop and um the rack is going to pretty much cover the top yeah so that's kind of nice but the but the hood you know it's out there i mean there's people that you know do the um the rhino lining kind of stuff um but that just weighs your your vehicle down even more and Mm -hmm kills your gas mileage and speed and it's already not a great (laughs) gas mileage vehicle to start with what's the what's the footage that you've gotten over your years that you're most proud of um well we were talking about thor the so that the the footage that they used for that was um from something i shot in 2013 and you know i kind of said i've been trying to go out to the plains you know 11 years ago it took to my fourth trip out there for me to actually see a real supercell and it just happened to be this most epic iconic one that was just um apocalyptic it was orange the sun was setting behind it and, and you know we're looking at it over like a uh, a harvested cornfield so it just looked like dead you know stalks and it was all brown and the storm was literally like this greenish orange and it's just swirling dust underneath it and it was just so beautiful and that was enough that was my first super cell. that was another one that I freaking got teary eyed in because I just finally had seen what I wanted to see for four years. And um, I posted that online. It was the second time I had a, a video go viral. I had a dust storm go viral in 2011. And this video was the number one video on Vimeo for all of 2013, like 2 million nice. plays or something. So Marvel saw it, um, that footage and they wanted it for, well, there's a very um, iconic scene in it with um, where Loki, you think he's dead and Thor is kind of embracing him. And then they pan back and there's just this big cloud spinning in the background. And that's like, my footage is the whole top half of this huge climactic scene. And uh, so that was that's really, really awesome. cool. So I'm really proud of that because it was, you know, that was um, on along my journey, um, the dust storm I got in 2011 was like my third ever, it went viral, it's kind of luck, uh, even though I kind of knew where to go. But, it, but I was like, hey, I want to keep doing this because people wanted to pay for this footage because it was just so crazy. It's been lots of different things. And so the, so, the, so the one I got in 2013 that was in Thor was kind of like this affirmation that I had kind of found my path. Like, this is what I meant to do. Like, I can't believe I had another video go viral. And it's all just from passion for loving to do this. And so I'm really proud of that. I mean, I'm proud of a lot of even that tornado. You know, that was really tough footage to like... I had to sacrifice some spots that day that were great because I needed to find something more open and you're in the hills of, of Oklahoma yeah. and it's brutal. So, um, so I mean, I just, I've had lots of great stuff, but I, that one, those two are my, are my all time favorites and they came a long time ago. And so, so did, I, go ahead. So go, I was going to say, did Marvel just like call you? Did they like get, they, they like Chris Hemsworth is like on the phone. He's <laughs> oh, like, God. he's like, I want to put this in Thor too. I have such a story. I have such a yeah, story. He's the one making that. the phone calls around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have like a side story about Chris Hemsworth and stuff that I wanted Love to do in my it. head with this. I, uh, I almost got to go to this premiere, but so uh-huh. no, they just, my, my footage was on this, um, other YouTube channel, the, the guy from Storm Chasers, Reed Timmer, um, the crazy guy in it, we're friends. I ended up shooting his wedding a few years ago. And so they oh, put it nice. on his YouTube channel, which had a lot more um, viewers and stuff than mine, subscribers at the time. And so I think they saw it there. But literally, um, they gave them my email address and they emailed me and said they want to use it. I really wish I would have known more back then because I would have tried to find out where is it being used exactly. And like, because yeah. they didn't really offer me a lot of money. But I was going to ask that. I wanted to know. I didn't know if you wanted to. Dude, that. I had like I, in my I brain, I'm like, my student loans are paid off. I'm going to make yeah. like 30 to 40 grand for this. This is going to be awesome. And then they offered me a thousand dollars. But I think I got, I think I got, it? no, I think I got four. I'm like, come on, you got to at least give me five. Like let's, I mean, this is, you know, they're like, well, yeah. we can get this off of Getty. But the thing is, is um, the street cred from that has been worth it. You know, there's a lot yeah, of things yeah. where I would like, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do this for a cheap because exposure and all that stuff doesn't do anything. Yeah, right. But my name is in the credits of that movie forever. Sick, and man. and everyone knows, you know, my footage was in there. So um, at least the people that I know. So, but it was funny because I had a cousin that I've, I've not talked to this cousin <laughs> since this happened, <laughs> but they like, we're going through some emotional be like, Hey, I don't think I'm going to be able to go to the premiere of Endgame this Monday. And this was a Thursday night. Do you want to go if I'm not going? And I'm like, you know what kind of Marvel fan I am. <laughs> like, yeah, I want to go. And I was going to go see with all these friends. And then at the last minute, Sunday, she's like, yeah, I'm going to go anyway. And I, in my brain, I was like, I'm going to go up to Chris Hensworth and say, hey, 
I just want to meet you. My footage was in your movie, and I'm just like, you're my favorite one. Like, just yeah. like I had, I, I didn't even know if I could have done that, but I yeah. was, I was so. <laughs> you wanted to goob out, yeah, yeah. I couldn't even yeah. sleep like the night she told me. I was so excited, and then, um, and then she didn't. So I haven't talked. To her. <laughs> and then she didn't. I mean, it was a horrible that thing. Sucks. Don't <laughs> tell you that there's a possibility. Yeah, yeah. Until yeah. It's no, that's the, like, that's the thing that's, that was so. Hor- that's the thing that's so horrible is like you don't tell no, that hopefully. to someone who's that much of a fan unless you're a hundred percent sure you're not going. Yeah. And it was just a. It was. A thing that this person does and uh no i, so, feel, anyway, I don't know her but I'm, uh she, she's not pleasant right now that's no i'm, <laughs> I'm still like, holding my sister not, dude, not yeah, a great so. thing <laughs> <laughs> um i gotta ask the technical side man so how, how does the time lapse work on the on the tornado because i've never even like thought about doing that with a camera well um it's kind of tough because the closer you are those things are actually moving fast yeah. So you don't get a lot of footage, but I'm just shooting a shot every second. And yeah. that's about as fast as my camera can handle. Um, some cameras, I think in like a Nikon one, a D850, I think you might go at every half second and it's yeah. fine. Um, but yeah, basically just sitting up and shooting every second. I've got a bunch more tornadoes where I'm doing the same thing. I'm just shooting as fast as possible. Yeah. And that last one there was really tough because I basically caught the last six minutes of that tornado. Yeah. So that's about 300 frames, which is very... Um, kind of the low end of something you want to shoot during the day. You want to, I want to get like 600 frames of something if I can, because that's about yeah. 10 to 12 minutes. What is your shutter at? Um, it's really just dependent on the scene. I'm usually at F8, ISO 100, F8, and okay, um, yeah. and then whatever the shutter speed works. Yeah. Um, so that, I mean, usually in storms, you're, you're already kind of slow because it's darker. So what's yeah. the benefit of doing it in a time lapse versus recording it? The frame rate? Um, well, the quality of still images like my, so the cameras I'm shooting with are 50 megapixels right now. And so when I put them together in a video, it's over 8k resolution. So to, for me to shoot an 8k video of that storm or over 8k is a very expensive, like red camera to do it that kind of quality. Yeah. Um, you know, I just got a new Canon R5 that does 8k video. I guarantee it's not as good as what I can get from a time lapse. So because of the time lapse you can edit each individual frame, like all kinds of stuff to make it just really, really cool. And um, it's just better quality on a cheaper kind of scale. It looks unique. Like yeah, I didn't know crazy. you were doing that until I saw your YouTube clips where you described it. Like you would describe yeah. these as like tornado time lapse and like, Wait, yep. what? So yeah, that, it's just something different. It's just a different way to do it. There's so many, there's so much video out there. Um, even I have a friend now um, that does slow-mo. He's got a really epic hundred, $50,000 camera doing slow-mo lightning and he's doing something different with that camera. Right. And there's, in, in there's just not a lot most people are out there getting regular footage of tornadoes. So getting the time lapse of one is very challenging. I mean, because you got to um, be in the right place. If you're too close, it's just going to go by and you may not get enough frames of it. So it's, it's a complicated thing. And also they haven't been happening as much the last couple of years, which has been frustrating. So hopefully this year, is that how you won the Emmy? No, I won the Emmy because I, the local station across the street, Channel Three, they um they do monsoon um, awareness specials every year for the most part, and so for one of the years they bought um, all my footage. Um, the guy that I'm friends with, the meteorologist, like, hey, we're gonna I'm gonna pay you for all your footage. We're gonna use it in here and make our special like better than anyone else's because we'll have all your time lapses describing everything we're talking about. And then they got nominated for you know like a Rocky Mountain region Emmy, yeah. and uh, so I bought my first suit. My wife and I got dressed up, went with all of them to a table and <laughs> went to the Emmys and freaking Jim Cantori is like on video and announces no, the trainers and I couldn't believe it. And that was, awesome. it was that very, very awesome. cool. And I've got it somewhere like up, uh, there it is. Yeah, we see yeah, it. Yep. See. Yeah. Congrats, dude. Yeah, it yes, was awesome. awesome. Appreciate it. I thought I was hoping I was hopefully close to another one with the nature show that, um, planet now oh oh my gosh north america or something um one of these oh no uh seven seven worlds that just came out and they I used heard like, of that one yeah it was another richard At- richard attenborough um oh, yeah, yeah, thing yeah, yeah. and um or is it david attenborough i always get that confused people would hate me if they i know his me. voice i know the voice you know the, i know the yeah, voice yeah. Everybody I know it's, knows all that matters. Yeah. it's all that matters <laughs> and um I had over two minutes of footage in one of the episodes and they said, you know, any like awards or, or, or Emmy nominations, you know, you'll be part of that because you're listed as a photographer once you go over a certain amount of time. So I haven't heard, I, I don't think that happened, but I was like hoping that get it for that show. That would have yeah. been pretty wild. Oh yeah. That's super cool, man. I just, 
I, I still want to go back to the tornado chasing. Like, I, <laughs> I, I, I got to know, like... Just, I, I'm, like... It doesn't I seem – you make it sound so safe. Like, it's like, no. oh, you know, I've never been in too much danger. Yeah. Wait, as I, he's talking I about guess one I've seen too many and vi- one movies. behind. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys fight? Like, are you yeah, guys when fighting you, for when, the best you, shot, though? Like, is it like Twister at all? Like, I got to oh, know the movie relations. Like, um, you, well, or, I mean, just, just like in anything, I'm sure in the podcast world – there's like people that you don't like that you know that are probably like compa- I don't know maybe maybe but- yeah <laughs> for for yours I mean I'm trying to think of like maybe getting the best angle or getting at that spot at the right time is that all you're racing and is there um, ever yeah a time but I mean I chase? I'm working I'm usually probably working maybe a, I'm not working harder than anyone else I'm working harder than um, I think a lot of like average chasers are probably just pulling off on the shoulders, getting out of their car and filming down the road. Mm-hmm. And they don't really care necessarily about, about what's around them, the quality, yeah. um, which is fine because there a lot of them are just documenting it. You know, it's yeah. not about art as much as it is about documenting. There are obviously us photographers out there and time lapsers that are trying to get good spots. So I do have to work a little harder because I have to get away from all the people if I can, which means you know, sometimes I am driving down a dirt road like a quarter mile off the main road so that I know there's nobody kind of in front of me or anything that's going to mess up my shot. So, and by so yourself? It, are you by um, yourself? I, I started by myself and I still kind of go by myself, but I also lead tours where I take people along, like oh, two or three people. Wait and a so, second. oh, like a tour? <laughs> like, oh, you're like, you're like, I'm going to yeah. get you in for, oh, oh it's a big, the, it's a big business. So, what's the insurance like for that? Like, um, at least for me, I don't, I mean, I, I have insurance. It's not that much. And I told them what I was doing. And so, but other people that do bigger tours and have vans and all this stuff, they pay a lot more money. Mine is just my own vehicle and a couple people. So it's not. That's um, the better way. I hate the charter boats that you go fishing. It's like a hundred people. That's boring. Like I want to have like. I want to be just me and two other people. Well, so yeah. And so one of them is I'm really good friends with these people that run extreme tornado tours and they're awesome. They're the best one. Like that's probably who I would go with, but they, they have like a couple of vans, you know, full of people. And their whole thing is to get you scarily close to a tornado Shit. right in everything. And, and I don't want to do that. I like to sit back cause I'm out of the rain and the hail cause for my camera and stuff. Um, so ours are, and I like to, I'm there to shoot my stuff and have people kind of pay to come along and, you know, help my, help me get what I want. And they also get what they want. Like yeah, they, two birds, they, one to, stone. they get to experience the chase and jump out and shoot where I'm picking the shoot, which is usually a pretty good spot. And um, so it's a good mutual kind of thing. And, and so, but I don't want to bring a ton of people cause it's just a lot of headaches. So I started off with just a couple and, and I did a van one year with five people for a few of them. And it was just a little, the van sucks. It's too much. So um, sort of back it's to not two. Sexy. It's yep. not sexy nope. at all. <laughs> and my buddy Brett helps me now. So so for about a month straight from mid-May to like mid-June, um, I'm kind of chasing with people. But but then for the last little bit of June, I get to go back, you know, usually to solo chasing. And I really, really, I really like that. Not a lot of people. I was listening to a podcast the other day and, and these three guys are like, they need all three of them to chase. You know, that someone to drive, someone to do this, someone to do that. And because that's, they can't even, focus on anything else and i'm like i've been doing it by myself for a long time it's just what i love and it's nice sometimes when you're out there just to make your own mistakes make your own decisions and your own failures and all this stuff and just enjoy it for yourself so i I always look forward to the end of the season there's got to be a line there because you got like the guys that are passionate about it the guys that are doing it for a business like counting heads like charlie get your ass back yeah. here <laughs> one two three we got nine we're supposed to have ten. Like, oh my gosh guy, that's yeah. another thing i didn't even think about that that'd be terrifying to make sure oh, everyone's yeah. in there i didn't know it was a business there's oh, yeah, there's, two things there's, you yeah, i had never heard of that there's oh, two yeah. things that you said earlier that blew my mind monsoon season we don't have that in florida and then two you were like yeah storm chasing is a big business here i i just yeah. i'm picturing it like disney world like people like showing up in a car and you're like get your tickets 20 percent off <laughs> wearing like a little See a tornado hat dude yeah. the the, the et <laughs> tours i just talked about that's their full business i mean they they will run tours from early april until like the end of june or into july almost like they'll have a few days off in between but they'll do like i know seven or eight tours and sometimes they have two van full of people you know i mean they make all their money in that like three or four months and then um that's what they do the rest of the year fix up their vans and all this stuff and there's there's multiple at least 10 you know, that I know of that are, you know, tour companies and, and then people like me that do it on a smaller kind of scale. And I bring usually the people that come with me are repeats um, mm-hmm. that have come before people I know and kind of trust. And yeah. cause I, it's a long, I've had 
some people along that I'm like, never again, you know? And so <laughs> it can be a little tough when you're on the road for seven days, you know? Yeah, you change the business name and you're like, yeah, it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, we're not doing this. Sorry, yeah. we're booked. I want to do it. I want to do that really bad. Like, yeah, I didn't huh? know that existed. That sounds yeah, like Yeah, I, I love how, like, you know, as Florida boys, we're like, we don't realize things like that exist. That's probably, yeah. like, normal up there or over there. They're just like, you know. No, a lot of people, I mean, how would you know that? You know, it's like it's not yeah. a, it's not like we are, you know, necessarily mainstream or kind of a thing that people even yeah. hear about too much. So the fact that you would pay to do that, that's the cool thing about anything you know i mean there's yeah. like you find out about you play settlers of Catan if you guys have ever played that and then you find out that you know there's a freaking like national worldwide championship for this board game that you've been playing with just your <laughs> friends forever and there's a guy who's won it like back-to-back -back years and you're like how you know i mean like i didn't even know that yeah. that existed so it's just interesting there's all these things Damn, I mean, that's Florida's crazy. got gators. That's all. Airboats and gators. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's our interesting, like, cool thing you want to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't think of anything else that can, like, come close to that. That yeah. Florida has. Hey, Florida has. Hey, is that hey, the, yeah. is that the board game from Parks and Recs, by the way? No, no. no. Yeah, I think uh, they mentioned Catan and Parks he and Recs. Does. They, they do, they do so. but it's not the one he created. Oh, no, 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 no. God, no. <laughs> I was yeah, like, wait a second. Oh, that no. no this is a real and very popular game. It's a very, okay. it's a great, it's a great game. We've been playing it for so long and it never gets old, but, you know, it's kind of, it sounds like a nerdy game. I know, hey. but it's really fun. No judgment here. <laughs> no, no. I just realized that I played 17 hours or 17 days of Call of Duty. Uh, Warzone. You you found that Warzone? out yesterday. Yes, I do. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm going to play after up. this tonight. So, well, you, want, oh. you want a PS4 or Xbox? Xbox. Oh, oh, we can cross platform. Oh, you can cross platform. Everything goes to shit. Everything goes to shit after that. You guys know it. Uh, I know. It sucks. That, that's literally what we're going to do. We're going to sign off in like, what what, do, like 20 yeah. or 45 minutes and we'll play. And Chase is going to go to bed and drink yeah, his uh, seltzer water. And then that's about it. <laughs> his seltzer water? What were you going to say that earlier? Where did come from? Um, we cut you off. You said Florida has something. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, um, you have really great uh, storms there. I have um, some buddies that are great lightning photographers and the lightning they capture out over the oceans incredible i'm i want to oh, go there yeah. sometime and do it but yeah. it's usually in the summer which is when our um monsoon yeah. um happens and so i'm usually here chasing and don't want to leave i saw when's a few of your uh lightning uh post man those i mean it was one that had like 15 or 20 bolts like in the in the photo it was something oh yeah that was a stack so that yeah. was a little bit cheating over 10 minutes but yeah we won't tell uh, okay <laughs> so no one so knows what are yeah. the seasons you have it sounds like tornado season is like may to like june right yeah like kind of actually right around now like there's there was actually like slight risk tomorrow in um texas panhandle um probably not going to mount anything but anywhere from like now even like early july is kind of tornado season and then in arizona monsoon t technically starts june 15th but usually around where I, I live in south we don't really see stuff till like early july um, so, so that's why I kind of chase right up until the end of June out there. And then I switch gears and come back, you know, basically I'm home and I chase Arizona and this has become like a really, another thing I'm, I'm well known here for what I do, especially chasing dust storms. Um, you know, last year I'm, I'm helping the BBC for, um, upcoming planet earth series and then nice a couple show. others trying to get them dust storm footage. And I think they'll be back again this year. Um, and so I'm helping like be like a consultant and all this stuff. And so usually have to kind of be around for it anyway. But I, but man, the dust storm footage, you know, people love that stuff for all these, you know, nature shows and documentaries that are out there. How does that work? Taking photos in that shit. That sounds miserable. Well, I usually let it hit me for about 20 <laughs> seconds and then I pack up, you know, I, I, I realized early on, if you stop the time lapse before the dust storm hits you, it's, it's just kind of like stopping before something really good happens. And you can stand uh, up your ass like for like two weeks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I can't even imagine after really good chases how much like I've got like like grits of sand like embedded in my it's scalp. Like, oh, this is from 1999. Years. Yeah. Oh, it's just it's and messy, that pretty man. new truck, too. You know? Oh, I know. And I, every at the end of every summer, I go take it to this car wash and they just detail it for eight hours. And they, <laughs> they kind of knew me for a little bit because I got all the hail dents and it's full of freaking dust on the dashboard and it's miserable. <laughs> they're like what are you doing yeah they, <laughs> so, so i mean we're all, we're all fathers here uh and i know you're a family guy as well mm -hmm. so um like how's that work like you're just like oh, oh well it's raining outside daddy's gotta go so I'll, <laughs> you know well um actually one of the things that you guys said earlier made me think about um the family part was you were saying oh i got chase tornadoes but it's it's really kind of safe and it's 
it's probably because I don't like to take too many risks when it comes to that because I am, you know, married and have three kids. Like I want to come back home. I don't want to die. I don't want to leave them. And so, um, so I do not, I try not to put myself into too much danger. I mean, there are, I mean, I am sometimes standing out there and freaking lightning bolt strikes 50 feet away. I'm like, God bless it. Why am I freaking doing this? You know? Um, but, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's been a little, it was a little rough early on with like balancing that with my wife and, and myself to trying to figure out, I got to be gone to do this. And it kind of sucks because I mean, I do like being at home. I, I'm a homebody. I like play Call of Duty and watch Netflix. And yeah. that's like one of my favorite things to do. And, and so, but this is what I have to do to, you know, for a business and stuff. So, you know, I, in Arizona, when, before the kids were kind of really into older for school, I took them all with me. My daughter has been chasing with That's me crazy, and she man. was a year and a half, basically like a little, she'd watch DVDs in the back seat while I chase and now she's 12. <laughs> so she's been chasing That's with crazy. me for like 11 and a half years or something like that. She was absolutely um, the cool kid. And she's she great. Like, think of those stories. What did the you cool do during this school, weekend? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I swam in the pool. Oh yeah, well I, I, I wrote a tornado. So I don't know if that matters. I wrote a tornado. Yeah. Like she's Wonder Woman well, or something. I mean, if you're like a tornado, old, I mean, you, yeah, you kind of play around with the words. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's been cool taking them. They have fun. Even my littlest guy, he's seven now, but when he was like f- four or five, he would start going with us and I'm like, Asher, look for lightning out the window. And he's like, and he'd be like, daddy, I see some right there and I'm, he's like my little spotter where I'm driving I'm like okay well we're gonna go see it and so it's really fun to do that here and then one year I took all three of them out to Oklahoma Panhandle at the you know end of June there was still like one more chase and the monsoon hadn't started so I'm like let's all go out for two days and get a mama's hair because I've been gone for so long anyway and I got him on the storm and it was cool and it was slow moving and all of a sudden it went tornado warned and I'm like oh, oh my shit. god here I am with like all three of my kids <laughs> my whole tornado family. warned storm right here <laughs> Um, it was safe. Nothing happened. But yeah. um, but that's you know, that's part of it has been been trying to involve them in it. I don't think any of them will be storm chasers. All they do is <laughs> my, one of them likes soccer and the other girl plays Minecraft. They don't care. But they yeah. but they but they love it because of me. And they'll tell me it's raining. It looks stormy outside, dad. And and all that stuff. So. Like, How long get do these things work, last? <laughs> like you're like you're like oh I took I took him out for a trip. You know we were gone for like you know <laughs> seven days something like that. Well know? I so usually I mean storms you know there's like patterns and storms will fire up like every day in like different places. That's why chasing is just kind of it's really exhausting at times. You could be Texas Panhandle one day and then the next day have to drive up to Wyoming for the next you know next set of storms mm-hmm. if you can make it and or I mean I've driven. I've been chasing all the way Southern Texas, you know, near the Mexico border and then driven all the next day to Iowa and then chased up in South Dakota and Minnesota that, that day after, because that's just where the storms were. And I was also have a tour group with me. I wouldn't have done that if I was by myself, I would have probably just gone home, but, but you've got to, you got to do that stuff. And I, and I've driven from New Mexico all night and, and switched off with a buddy all the way to Montana for, you know, storms the next day, because that's just where they were. And so because of, you know, how, you know, great the models are and, and, and what I've learned, you know, I can figure out where they're going to be the next day and you just show up to there and hope that the storms fire like they're supposed to and chase them. And the supercells last a while. I mean, they sometimes I've got to chase a supercell for four hours over 300 miles from like east of Denver all the way into Kansas, like 350 miles. I mean, chased it for, you know, six hours or something crazy. That's awesome. It's fantastic. I feel like you should get the Tesla truck. I, yes. I, like, just, Ooh, like, I like that. I thought that first looked really I thought cool. About, yeah. Like an like, armored I mean, just, beast. Bro, it looks it looks over the top. Like if you're living in the city or in the suburbs, like too much, bro. Like it's too much. But like for what you do, that is designed perfectly. You yeah. slap your logo on that and you drive. And now you can sleep at night while it's driving in Wyoming. Like that's what I'm investing in. Oh, I have totally insane. thought about that with Teslas that I literally could get to Montana and sleep in the car while it's driving. I get so Did much you see work where they, the where they like the where they were really revealing that? The Tesla truck, uh-huh. and they broke like, the windshield. They're like the windshield shatterproof, yeah. and he's like, throw it. What is it like a rock or a golf ball? Throw a golf ball at it, and somebody <laughs> threw a golf <laughs> ball at it and it shattered. <laughs> I thought it was the ro- the big boulder, the rock shattered. I, I don't like know that, if I yeah. saw it live, but yeah. yeah, that was a that was probably a little embarrassing. And Elon, Elon was like, "Well, that didn't work." <laughs> Wasn't he the one doing it? Wasn't he the one up there? It was doing either it? him or the guy with it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. This shit was so funny. I feel like every storm chaser is just like, all right, so not well, that truck. We're not uh, getting that. What Hale would do. Um, no, I'm sure that thing costs so much money too. I'd be really terrified to uh, drive it out there, but it'd probably be good. It'd probably be really good for it. It would be. Oh, uh, Mike, dude, um, 
before we let you go, we have to tell like everybody where to find you. Like I, I kind of explained it prior to the video, but we haven't right. talked about like where everyone can like follow you. One of the best you Instagram website. like that you'll follow. Like, oh yeah, as far I appreciate as like that, bro, it's it's beautiful. It's you do a great Thank job. You. Thank you. Um, you can just look up my name if you can spell it right, Mike, and then O L B I and S K I, which is tough for people. Um, it's I use my name on everything, so Instagram, Twitter, Website. Vimeo, YouTube. I have a Patreon page as well, um, and Facebook. I don't. Facebook is I'm becoming less and less, you know, updating that. Yeah. But I post a lot of my stuff to most of my videos go to YouTube now, and I do you know random chase videos. Some not so you know some not time-lapse films where it's just crappy i hold my phone and and do like a chase vlog and just for fun and some Dude, of those I are saw that bro the, the video actually looked good it was on an iphone right yeah yeah i'm excited about this year because i got the 12 pro and it's i mean the video is supposed to be even better so i'm, yeah. I'm excited to just take that out jason and see because it's so much easier to pull that out and shoot a storm and talk to the you know camera and do whatever instead of having to have a big bulky um, video cam or a handy yeah. cam or something. So, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where you can find me. Just look, look my name up. It's I'm luckily I have a very unique last name. There's not many of us. Bro. That is true. <laughs> Absolutely. I was going yeah. through your website. I was seeing all the licensing. I feel like everybody listening right now has seen your footage somewhere. Like you're in, like we said, Thor Lamborghini, State Farm commercials, Audi yeah. commercials, Nep uh, Nespresso. Why, wait, why are you in espresso? It was weird. They took they actually took that Booker Supercell, which is the Thor one. They took it and flipped it and used it for some cafe thing. I don't know, man. Okay. I, I also just got like my actual fifth feature film licensing for the Liam Neeson movie that I think came out where he's like a border um, cowboy or border guy rancher okay. on the yeah. Mexico Arizona border and some like illegals come over and they're being chased by drug lords and he ends up of course <laughs> having to avenge the mom dying not or something. liam neeson yeah. liam neeson yeah. man i know it's, it's a weird plot it's very different for him i was waiting for the the plot like in yeah. he's gonna the save somebody yeah. does, does he too, have yeah. a particular set of skills yeah he does he does so that was like i think that was like my like this whole thing has been a dream for me like i just the fact that my footage is you know great enough for anybody to want to use it for something and um and the fact i mean it, I've lost track of everybody that you know has licensed. I'm not trying to be braggy or anything like that. It's just yeah. I have my footage on this stock footage company called Film Supply, and I license it myself. And every month I get the reports from Film Supply, and it, I'm just like, oh, Urban uh, or Under Armour used my footage this month, and That's awesome. and Hyundai and all the stuff, and they use it for all these commercials and things. And and um, even in the one of the oh the Pearl Jam, the Pearl Jam used a bunch of footage from Film Supply. So I have like a bunch of lightning footage and random stuff in the Pearl Jam. The last no one they did like shit. a year ago or something. I love um, Pearl Jam. That's awesome. Man. There's That's even like this. So this little newspaper clip, I would never, ever do this, but I didn't even know it was happening. So they did a little interview with me about my footage in there, the local newspaper in a Pearl Jam video. And then they did this whole full page like article in the entertainment section. And that's like one of my photos of me doing a selfie in front of a dust storm. In there. <laughs> that's awesome. And so I'm like, that's the first time I've ever had that. So I got to like clip that and oh, do it. Yeah, but it was all did. about, it's all about the Pearl Jam thing. And it made like local news and all that stuff. So, um, so I just, I'm really like blessed because I just freaking really, really love this stuff. I never, I got into weddings to make money. I didn't think I would make money from this and it's turned out to be, you know, a business and I just absolutely love it. So I appreciate you guys having me on and let me talk oh, about it. Thank it you really so nice. much thank for you. coming on. Dude, man. That was awesome. Honestly, I will say I, one thing, like, like I could tell, like you could tell when somebody does this, you know, for a passion and mm -hmm. how much you love it. And I think that's really cool, man, because awesome. you know, you're like paying the bills, doing the wedding stuff, but your actual <laughs> passion and you can tell the love, you know, when you talk about the tears coming from your eyes, multiple times, man. man, that's super sweet. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it it's yeah it's impressive man like i said I, the media and the press stuff when i was going through it i was like holy shit it's not just like the emmy and the and yeah. the, and thor man it was like you're in there's absolutely no way no one has hasn't seen your footage which is kind of yeah crazy that's cool. true right? yeah. when you think well about i mean it. i mean honestly like a lot of the nature documentaries that have come out one strange rock and seven worlds and north america and all those kind of nature shows that are on bbc and nat geo i mean my footage is in a lot of them and um, so you've, you've, if you like those, you know, you've, you've probably seen it at some point. It might be brief. might be a couple clips. But it's in there. Absolutely. Amazing. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> um, I appreciate you coming on, dude. Again, I yeah. appreciate yeah, the time so much, you took Mike. out, man. Yes.
Uh, hopefully, we'll see you on Call of Duty. We'll we'll swap out our names. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For man. I'll turn you cr- I'm probably too once. crappy for you guys. No, no for, Kevin, no, for Kevin, not me, bro. No, I just get drunk second, and have fun. No, Kevin's no. the gamer. He's a 17 weeks or days. What's on, your KD, Kevin? No, nah, don't worry. It's not, I want to know your KD, man. I don't yeah. know. It's like over 1.3 or something. Ooh, Mine is mine is. I don't even care. It's like 0.75 or something. My friend, Mike. There you go. My yeah, friend is a three, like KD in Warzone, oh. and he told he told me seven five is like actually average. So um, when so when oh we my, play, okay. bring your friend with us. Okay. Yeah, bring your friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you play with him, you just win games. That's there insane. Just I don't know how back. people play like that. <laughs> yeah. It's all right, man. Um, I appreciate you coming right, on, dude. Thank you, man. Thank Take you. care, brothers. All right, guys. Uh,